Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, my dear students. This is your English teacher from Al Tamayyuz Modern School for Boys. In this video, inshallah, I'm going to teach you Unit 8, Lesson 4 and 5. As usual, we are talking about technology. Unit 8 is all about technology. And more specifically, in this video, you are going to learn about the following. The first thing is about grammar rules we are going to talk about models wish clause and some negative adjectives how to make a negative adjective so this is the first part about grammar rules next you have to learn some new vocabulary of the lesson and let's get started as usual as i said this is unit eight so let's start with this step or lesson four uh, please open your book page 64. In this page, you have the first exercise, which is about grammar, more specifically models. We have to know the difference between can, could, must, should. Can, could, must, and should. You have in your book, at the end of your book, you have a grammar reference in pages 131 and 132, uh, you can read more about these models. But first of all, before we start, let's watch a video about models. As I said, can, could, must, and should. And I'll be back in a minute. Models of ability. What is a modal? A modal is a word that comes before the main verb. A modal gives a verb extra meaning. The modal can is a modal of ability. Can means you are able to do something. For example, I can dance. I can ride a horse. I can use a computer. Modals are always followed by a base verb. A base verb is a verb with no ending added to it. A base verb has no S, ED, or ING ending. We use can and a base verb when someone is able to do something. I can cook. You can ride a bike. He can play the guitar. We use can't and a base verb when someone is not able to do something. Can't is short for cannot. You cannot swim. She can't play the piano. They can't drive. We use can, a subject, and a base verb to ask if someone is able to do something. Can you snowboard? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Can he play baseball? Yes, he can. No, he can't. Can the children ski? Yes, they can. No, they can't. After watching the video, uh, you have to know that if we want to use can and could, you have to know that they express general ability or if they are negative, so we are talking about inability. So when I say I can swim or I cannot swim, you can say she cannot see without her glasses. This is at the present tense, in the present tense. I can or I cannot, or I can't. If you talk about the past, 
Now you can say, I could swim when I was two. Or she couldn't read until she was six. Of course, in this sentence or these two sentences, we are talking about past simple. Again, if you talk about present, you can say, I can. If you talk about past, you can say, I could. So can in the present, but could in the past. We can also use can or could to express possibility or impossibility, not ability. I see possibility, something which is likely to happen. Please uh, have a look at these examples. Fast cars can be dangerous, can be dangerous. I can't come to your graduation party. I can't come. So it's possible or impossible to happen. The roads could be very busy this weekend. So can and could can be uh, used equally if we are talking about possibility. Uh, please note that we can use able to to express ability or inability also, but in one occasion, not a general ability. We are not talking about generalization. Here we are talking about only uh, an occasion or uh, a situation, you can say. For example, I lost my car keys, but I was able to open it finally. So I'm talking about a specific situation. So when I say I lost my car keys, but I was able to open it finally. Here is uh, what we are talking about, inability or ability in one situation. On the other hand, when we talk about must or mustn't, of course, totally different situations because we are talking about obligation. When I speak or when I feel strongly about something, I use must. So I must finish this letter before I go to bed. You must wear a seat belt at all times. This is obligation. You can also use must and mustn't for advice or when you recommend something. You must see a doctor. You look terrible. You must see a doctor. I recommend or I give you a piece of advice to see a doctor. We can use negative of must as mustn't, but the meaning is different because uh, it means that something is wrong. You mustn't steal. You mustn't drive fast in residential areas. This is uh, wrong, so you mustn't do that. Okay, here is about difference between must and must. So let's answer this exercise. You have to complete the sentences with can, or can't, could or couldn't, okay? Take your time, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. The first sentence, I need my bifocal glasses. I need my glasses. Why? Because I, uh, who can tell me? I can or I can't, could or I couldn't see without them. Of course, I can't see without my glasses. So I'm talking about present situation. Sentence B, computers help us to instigate new learning technology. Computers help us to instigate new learning technology. I'm talking again about present time. So of course, can help us. I research at school because there is, there is a new software library at school and software library. So I'm not talking about past, I'm talking about can also. I can research at school, why? Because there is a software library. Sentence 
D. 10 years ago, here I'm talking about past simple. 10 years ago, you can or you could easily, you could or you couldn't easily find a spot to park in town 10 years ago. Of course, it was easy to park in town, so you could. You could easily find a spot to park in town. Spot means a location or a, sp a place, specific place. I wanted to text you, but I remember your number. I wanted, it's past simple. I wanted to text you, but I couldn't exactly. I couldn't remember your number. Next. Exercise three. Here we have uh, some inventions, some devices, or as we studied before, appliances. Here you have to look at the inventions and, sh and answer these questions in pairs. What are the questions, again, that we have? What can these things do? Or what can we do with these things? This is question A. Question B. What will these things be able to do in the future? I am talking about in the future. And what technology do you have that your grandparents didn't? Something that we have today, but our grandparents didn't have in the past. So take your time. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. When I say... Uh, something that we can do with these appliances. Okay, who can tell me first what are these appliances or devices or sets that we have? On the left, we have a television set. In the middle, we have a computer, desktop. And on the right, we have a mobile phone or a, a cell phone. So what can we do with the TV? What can we do with the computer? And what can we do with the telephone of course if you talk about the television you can watch tv right you can watch tv you can watch your uh, your favorite movies you can watch your favorite films you can watch your favorite sports and so on what can you do with the laptop or the mobile uh, sorry the desktop or the computer you can also do your homework you can study on your computer you can play games and so on okay now who can tell me what we can do with the cell phone or mobile phone exactly i can make calls i can receive and send messages i can send and receive emails i can take pictures and record videos I can use it as an alarm and so on. We have so many uses of the mobile phone. Question B, what will these things be able to do in the future? Of course, you have to imagine, imagine that you can do many things uh, or these things can do many things in the future, unlike the uh, familiar uses of these appliances. Of course, you have to imagine to answer this question. Question C, if we talk about the technology that we have nowadays and our grandparents didn't have in the past, of course, we have all of them. All of them, they were not uh, with our grandparents in the past. Nowadays, we have computer. Nowadays, we have mobile phones. Nowadays, we have television sets, but in the past, our grandparents didn't have all of these. Now it's time to move to another rule, which is wish clauses. When I say I wish, is it okay to say I wish I can or I wish I could? Is it okay to say I wish I go or I wish I went? If you want to know the difference, of course, you have to watch this video first, then I'll be back in a minute. 
The first structure is the verb wish plus the past simple. And we use this to describe a situation that we would like to be different. So we are describing a situation in the present that we would like to be different. Example. I wish I had a house. I wish I had a house. So here we have the verb wish in the present tense. And then we have the verb have in the past simple. I had. I wish I had a house. And this means that, well, for the moment, in the present, I do not have a house. And I am sad about that. I would like a house. Okay, so in the present, I regret that I do not have a house. Another example. Mark wishes he lived in London. Mark wishes he lived in London. So we have the present tense of wish. And then we have the past tense of live. He lived. So this means that Mark does not live in London. And he is sad about that. He would like to live in London. And the third example. I wish I was rich. And unfortunately, I am not rich in the present. And of course, I am sad about that. Now, it's very important to notice and to understand that this is happening in the present tense. In the present. Okay? So, we use the past simple form but we are describing a situation in the present. So, I do not have a house in the present and I am sad in the present. Okay, so be careful. We're using a past simple form, but the meaning is the present. So, these are correct, but this, this is wrong. I wish I have a house. No, this is, this is not right. And Mark wishes he lives in London. No, that is wrong because here we have the present tense, but we must use the past simple. And this is also wrong. I wish I am rich. No, we must say I wish I was rich. Past simple form of the verb to be. Okay. Wish plus the past perfect. Past perfect. And we use this to describe a past situation that we regret. So this is slightly different. We are now talking about a situation from the past. I wish I had apologized to Jane. So I wish is the present form of wish. And I had apologized is the past, por past perfect form of apologize. So this means that, well, I did not apologize to Jane and I regret that now. I regret that I did not apologize to Jane. Okay? So when the structure, if the structure is, if the past perfect is in the affirmative or a positive, then it means that we regret not doing something. Okay, I did not apologize to Jane and that is what I regret. I wish I hadn't sold my house. I wish I hadn't sold my house. So this means, in fact, well, I sold my house but now I regret it. But now I regret it. So here, um, I hadn't sold is in the negative. Okay. And so when we regret something that we did. Okay. 
We can also use the word never with a negative to emphasize our regret. So we can say, I wish I had never sold my house. I wish I had never sold my house. So this is a different way of saying this. This sentence and this sentence, the meaning is the same, but here it is stronger. Our regret is stronger. So I sold my house and I really regret it now. Okay, I am very, uh, I'm very sad now that I sold my house. I wish I had never sold my house. After, uh, after watching this video, you have to know that we have two cases, at least uh, in this uh, uh, grade, grade 10, you have only two cases, case one and case two. The first one, if we talk about something that we want to happen in the present time or in the future. If you want a situation in the present or future to be different, you use wish plus the past simple of the verb. So if you don't speak Italian, you can say, I wish I spoke Italian. Be careful, I spoke. Spoke is a past simple of the verb speak. If you don't have a big car nowadays or right now, and you wish to have a big car, so you say, I wish I had a big car. It means you don't have, but if you want the situation to be different, so I wish I had. Had is the past symbol of have. I wish I were on a beach. It means you are not on the beach right now, you are in the office. So if you are in the office and you dream of going to the beach, you say, I wish I were on the beach. Be careful here, we are, we are using were, not was. It's a regular case. Never use I wish I was. Always use I wish I were. The second case, if you express a regret, when we talk about regret, it means something happened in the past. You want a situation in the past to be different. In this case, you use had plus past uh, uh, participle, or we use it, as we say, past perfect. So you have to use had plus verb three. So I wish I hadn't eaten so much. It means you ate a lot in the past and you wish the situation would be different. So I wish I hadn't eaten. I wish they had come on holiday with us. It means they didn't come. So you say had come. I wish I had studied hard to pass the test. It means you didn't pass. And you want the situation to be different. Of course, in the past, you regret a lot. So you say, I wish I had studied out. Let's practice uh, this case or these two cases in this exercise. Complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb. Take your time. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now uh, with the first one, who can answer this one? You have to correct the form of the verb, of course. Understand, uh, call, listen, and verb to be. The first one, now that he is in China, he wishes he understand Chinese. Of course, we are talking about he wishes he understood. Why we... Uh, uh, have to why do we have to write or to choose this uh, form past simple understood is a past simple of understand because we want this situation to be different he can't speak Chinese so he wishes he understood or spoke Chinese I wish you sentence two number two 
I wish you called earlier. Earlier gives me an impression that we are talking about past simple. So if the sentence is in past simple, we have to correct this verb in two words, had plus verb three of call. So you had called, had called. They wish they listen to us sooner, sooner all is the opposite of earlier, sooner in the future it means. So you have to use only the past simple of listen, it will be listened. When we begin the trip, they will wish, will, be careful. Here we have will, no past uh, sentence uh, or no past tense used. So you have to use only the past of B, where they were with us, okay? It's time now to study uh, the vocabulary of the lesson. The first word that we have, of course, these uh, our words, repeat after me, please, bifocal, frequent, instigate, legible, obedient, patient, reputation, software, spot. Repeat after me, bifocal, frequent, instigate, legible, obedient, patient, reputation, software, spot. Be careful, you have to memorize these words. Uh, if you have a look at the verbs, or, or I'm sorry, at the words in meaningful sentences, they will be like this. The first one, scientists have devolved bifocal contact lenses. Bifocal contact lenses. So this is the, uh, the word bifocal. Action films instigate violence amongst children. They encourage means encourage so instigate means encourage let me go back again please to bifocal when i say bifocal we're talking about lenses or glasses means they have two different focal lengths two different focal lengths instigate here it means to encourage okay to uh, bring about something to initiate something so when I say action films or wrestling, instigate violence among the children. The third sentence, the price should be legible. What does legible mean? It means it's very clear to read. So if something is legible, it's very clear or it's clear enough to read. Okay, the price should be legible on items before people buy them. You should be obedient to your parents and your teachers. Obedient means you listen to the commands, you listen carefully to the teacher, you listen carefully to your father and mother, so you are obedient. You have to be patient. Patient here is an adjective, it's not a noun. Patient, when you deal with kids, patient means you have uh, the ability to wait without being annoyed. You can wait for a long time, so you are patient. The company has a worldwide reputation for quality. If you talk about the quality of iPhone, it means they have the reputation. Reputation for quality. You have uh, if you are talking about something or someone that has a, or that all people speak in a good way about him or about it, so you have the reputation. Software, of course, it's easy for you. All people can download or you can download many software for free from App Store. What do you do on App Store? You just download software. You have been looking for a good spot for camping. Spot is a specific or a particular place or point. 
spot for camping, spot for parking, spot for building a place, and so on. The last sentence, he is a frequent visitor to this country. Frequent, when I talk about a frequent, means happening often or doing something often or it happens so uh, many times. So a frequent visitor to the country means he uh, visits the country so often. These are the words but in meaningful sentences. Open your book, please, page 65. In page 65, you have some adjectives and their negative forms. Can we make negative from adjectives? Of course. Do you know more adjectives with, uh, or that start with UN that we pronounce un? For example, we have lucky. It becomes unlucky. Take your time. Think of some adjectives that start with un or un. Okay. Who can tell me some negative adjectives that start with un? Excellent. We can find some adjectives like unhappy, unable, unacceptable, unfriendly, unusual, unfair, unhealthy, unbelievable, uncomfortable. These are adjectives or negative adjectives that start with UN pronounced, of course, un, unhappy. If you talk about friendly, unfriendly, healthy, unhealthy. Uh, we don't have uh, only uh, the UN, but a prefix that we can also have UN. We have DIS, like the, uh, that, like, uh, sorry, what mentioned here, IL, IM, IR, and IM. Now you have to find the negative forms of the following adjectives in the box, and you can, uh, of course, this will help you to find the negative adjectives. Take your time, I'll be back in 16 seconds. Okay, that's enough. If we talk about formal, frequent, friendly, honest, legible, obedient, patient, polite, regular, relevant, tidy, these are positive adjectives. We want to make them negative adjectives using prefixes like il, im, in, the is and so on as mentioned before now, okay the first one here that we have which is friendly and tidy they can be used with un so they will be unfriendly untidy we can use im if the adjective starts with p so impatient and impolite impatient impolite you can use dis this if the adjective starts with the vowel o dishonest and disobedient dishonest and disobedient if the adjective starts with r so you can also use ir irregular irrelevant irregular irrelevant if the adjective starts with l like legal like legible, use IL, illegal, illegible. And finally, if we have F starting 
or the adjective, the adjective starting with F, we can use informal, infrequent. Informal, infrequent. Write these down, write these words or adjectives down. You have to study them. They are very important. They are called negative adjectives. Now it's time to answer this exercise. You have to write or to complete these sentences with the negative form of uh, some adjectives from question B. Just fill in the blanks from uh, using some adjectives from the previous question. Okay. The first one, my room is a bit, bit means slightly or a little. Huh? I wish I had a robot to clean up the mess. If, you, if something is not clean, it means it's not tidy, so it is untidy. Number two, it is to drive faster than the speed limit. It is illegal, of course, you mustn't drive. So it is illegal to drive faster in uh, to uh, sorry faster than the speed limit sentence three children should learn to do what their parents tell them disobedient children should learn to do what their parents tell them sentence number four people who live in cities often have a reputation for being people who live in cities unfriendly and always get on very well without uh, them i always get on very well without them number five i can't read your writing it's completely we should use something which means i cannot see well i cannot read well so it is illegible. Illegible means not uh, uh, read in the right way. It's time to practice again about models at the end of this video. You have to practice what we have studied earlier in this video about models can, could, mustn't, and can't. The first one, I see without my, my bifocal classes, uh, glasses sorry choose one number two ten years ago you easily find a spot in park uh, sorry a spot to park in town you keep your shoes on when you visit a mosque you always check your oil water and tires before taking your car on a long trip these are four sentences find out the right model for each one so let's get started. The first one, who can read? Yes, I see without my bifocal classes, uh, glasses, so I can see, I could see, mustn't or can't. Excellent. I can't see without my bifocal classes, glasses. Ten years ago, of course, you have to choose a past simple here, which is could you could easily find a spot to park in town sentence three you keep your shoes on when you visit a mosque mm, if you talk about visiting a mosque so you mustn't keep your shoes on number four and the last one you always check your oil water and tires before taking your car on a long trip here i'm talking about should exactly i'm giving you a piece of advice you have to or you should sorry you should check your oil before visiting or before sorry taking your car on a long trip thank you very much for your time this is the end of our video i hope you enjoyed it and inshallah see you in other videos Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.